So what will you learn today? What's the power of a watch? We're talking watches, presidents, and your personal brand on today's Money with Friends, featuring the author of The Soulful Art of Persuasion, Jason Harris. Welcome back to the Money with Friends podcast, coming to you live from my mom's half finished basement in Texarkana, Texas. I'm Joe Saul Cihai, and you are? Jason Harris. <laughs> coming to us from? I am a slow Jason Harris <laughs> coming to you <laughs> from my empty office in Soho, New York, New York. There it is. This is the show where we cover recent stories ripped from the financial press. Today, we have an interesting feature from the New York Times. Not only do we read through them like some podcasts, but we're going to dive into how they affect your wallet and what you can do to invest, save, or pay down debt more effectively. And if that's not the case, if that's not enough, Jason and I are going to share a big idea at the end of today's show you can take with you to be better with money the rest of your day and all in usually less than 20 minutes. Jason Harris, we didn't scare him away the first time he was here. He's back for more. More, um, and we're recording this just after election results. Um, so Gregory hanging out with us, Jason, stress eating pizza for breakfast. You stress eating this morning? Uh, I have not had any food yet this morning because I drank so much whiskey last night and I do not drink during the week. That is like a golden rule. But I, I just started uh, putting those ice cubes and drinking some uh, some whiskey. So now I am in recovery mode. And uh, I will be eating later in the day. I think that's I think yeah. that's three quarters. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Three quarters of the country. I think it was a big night for Anheuser Bush. I think it was a big night for Aviator. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, one of our clients is Jose Cuervo. Oh yeah, and they're having the best year they've they've had. They literally can't make tequila fast enough uh, because uh, you know when 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 you're when you're shut in people tend to drink and uh, I don't, I, I can't imagine how much tequila was consumed last night. So, so, well, but yeah, I mean, and, and even before that, just selling it to parents because they, uh, they, they, they are trying to be teacher employee, uh, run a business, whatever it might be all at the same time at the end of the night. Um, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, uh, long night, Long week ahead. We were talking about this. It, it doesn't seem like we're going to know. You think when this comes out, we will know who the president is and this will be an old story? Or do you think? Uh, man, I man, I hope so. But that's only 24 hours away. And I have, I have this feeling. I don't think that's going to happen. Before. I don't think so either. But I do think that we've got a great story about personal branding, about the power of a watch. Uh, let's, uh, let's see which one of our friends is going to help us kick this off. Hey, this is Chris from Popcorn Finance. Just like hanging out and chatting about the news, that's why I tune into Money with Friends. All right, today's uh, piece, as I mentioned earlier, comes to us from the New York Times, and it's the allure of the president's watch. And uh, it's a great piece written by Penelope Colston. And just to, to, to give people an idea of what Jason and I are going to talk about, a guy named, and I'm going to slaughter this name, uh, uh, Kieo uh, Pianin was bewitched by a watch, Penelope writes, so much so that his life became deeply intertwined with the Volcane Cricket, a Swiss timepiece known is the first mass-produced mechanical watch to successfully incorporate an alarm. But there was another part of the watch's past that attracted Mr. P.A.N. even more. Released in 1947, it's been presented to many American leaders, earning it the nickname the President's Watch. In fact, as we record this, this is why I thought this was a good piece for today, because what, what what's happened is this Mr. P.A.N., uh, his his dad ran a jewelry shop, and he fell in love with this these Volcane watches. And he's taken these watches and he's presented them to different uh, presidents. In fact, nearly every president and presidents not only like them, but they, they consistently wear them. Uh, Harry Truman was the first president to own one. Uh, uh, I believe Dwight Eisenhower, when they started talking about raising tariffs on watches, he liked his so much. He decided that, that raising tariffs on watches wasn't a good idea. Uh, <laughs> And and uh, Nixon, Trump, has one. <laughs> Trump does have one. Yeah, it's uh, from Truman to Trump. 
And, 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 and Nixon loved his so much that when he sent it back, he sent it with a note uh, to have it repaired about how great it was and he couldn't wait to get him back. And by the way, these watches range anywhere from $5,000 to $52,000. Um, and, and I think there are a lot of stories here as we record this, Jason, the day after the election. The, the, the biggest story to me, though, is the power of handing somebody a gift and how much this gift of a watch is appreciated by all these presidents. And, and by the way, the branding then that this watch got because it's been affiliated with presidents, like presidents, not only love the watch, they spoke openly about the watch. They, uh, uh, one president gave 200 of his friends, watches bought 200 more of them like it sold more product people saw it even more and this watch got a reputation just because one guy gave it as a gift to the right person yes i i mean there's so many stories in this in this piece um the so i guess the, the thing that jumps out at me is uh by naming it the president's watch right like having that sort of uh, brand around it it's almost the tagline for the watch made the watch skyrocket and sell more and go up in value. So it's kind of the power of the branding. There's the power of the gift, like you said. And then the other thing that stood out to me as, as a business owner when I started my company is we would do uh, free work for brands. And so in this case, the brand is the president. Uh, the work is giving the, a watch that you could sell, but giving it away. We would give away services. We would do free work for Microsoft, uh, for uh, Sony. So for different companies, we would pitch them ideas. Then we would say, we'll take care of it and produce it ourselves in order to build a case study and real and build our brand off of their brand. And that's really the, the case here. That's the, that's the parallel I drew is to, in order to, to, you know, make this shop famous, make this watch as a gift from the president, you know, the president's watch, they would gift it. And they wouldn't worry about making the, the five to 50 grand that they right. Yeah. They're playing for a much bigger, you're, you're playing at that game at a much bigger level than, than, than whatever amount of money Microsoft will give you for the free work that you do. Exactly. Right. And so it's, I think the, the shop owner really um, employed a lot of great principles, you know, branding, the power of handing someone a gift, the, the, the power of, uh, of, of giving, in order to receive. Um, and, and I think, you know, that's what made it really successful, which, which was highlighted here. Well, and this is interesting to me also, Jason, because that's a powerful thing for business owners, what you're talking about, but a lot of our, a lot of our fans don't own a business. And yet I was in a forum the other day and somebody said, Hey, I'm trying to start buying real estate, right? Should I give my realtor a gift? And by and large, people in the in the um, in, in this forum said, "Hell no! You're giving them a commission. You're giving them this big commission." And I wrote something a little snarky. I have to admit, I was not in the best mood. I said, "Yeah, why the hell wouldn't you want to build a personal relationship that could blossom into something better by treating somebody like a human being that you respect and want to do more business with?" Yeah. Like the commission is what they get for doing their work, but but the commission doesn't build a connection between people. The watch in this case, or the gift to the realtor, builds a connection that 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 helps you work together with your team. That's right, and then that that will always come back in spades if it's a relationship that you want to build. Um, I believe you know one of the principles I talk about in the book is generosity, and, and a key principle of generosity is giving things away, and in this conversation giving things away can be information connections uh references resources uh compliments in this case we're talking about stuff and i think there is a power in i can't tell you how many things a week i will send out with a handwritten note of, of you know if i pitch if i pitch today i'm pitching today a fast food company and we lose i will give the consultant on the pitch i will give the clients i will send them something with a note thanks for inviting us in it'll it'll log in their brain and they'll remember that gesture that simple gesture even though i'll be upset and and sure. sore that we didn't win it i'm trying to play the long game and the power of handwritten notes and give, gifting will always come back to you in spades and if they're unhappy with their company that they chose they'll remember us 
and they'll they'll give us a call back. I've seen that work time and time again. So I, you know, it is powerful. I was actually going to ask you about that, Jason, because a piece of the story we haven't talked about yet is Mr. Pian, the guy that gave these watches away. Uh, he now has this collection of handwritten thank you notes from all these different presidents, and and they show them in the piece. We don't see anymore, Jason. We don't see handwritten notes anymore. Is a note is a handwritten note worth the time, like these presidents gave back to the guy with the watch, or in today's you know is an email thank you fine. Um, I always go well. Okay, it depends, right? So we all have limited time in our lives and we can't be doing handwritten notes every time we it pop, the thought pops into our head. Uh, so emails can suffice. I do, I do, I like to have um, sort of things that I uh, consistently do that I know I'm going to do. For example, uh, we have 200 employees here and not obviously people don't own businesses, but you can do this if you're working somewhere. This is like an easy thing to do that will make a good a good impact it will be very persuasive um for you in, in any line of work but i do um handwritten birthday notes to every employee so i have a spreadsheet i get a stack of cards at the beginning of the year i just do it you know when it pops up that date you, it, it takes about you know 30 seconds to write a birthday card to someone they're pre-stamped i set it all up and then someone at the company gets a handwritten note you know, from the CEO, and you can do that at any level in any company uh, to people, to your coworkers. That is an example of not having to think. It takes the guesswork out of should this be a handwritten note, should it be an email. Just come up with a tradition like that that you do um, reflexively, and it goes a long way. I can't tell you how many how many texts I get and how many you know positive the positive impact that that good good goodwill gesture does that takes about thirty seconds. Well, and I love the fact that, you know, the other thing I like about that, Jason, is that you batch it, right? I mean, yeah, it's a it's a fantastic gesture. And yet, and yet anybody could sit down on January 1st, write them out for the entire year ahead of time, and then just pop them in the mail or whatever on the day that they need to go out. That's right. 200 and 200 would probably take you a, a day to get through. Yeah. So yeah. A day, a day, a day of work for a year of uh, goodwill. Right. returns absolutely yeah, returns, yeah. yeah hey in just a second jason and i are going to have our takeaways from today's piece about presidents and, and watches the day after the election uh but should it first, also be about microphones or <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> our technology our it takeaway our maybe it was takeaway from the day People hearing the end of this don't know that we took a break in the middle of this because uh, Jason's uh, microphone decided it wasn't going to work anymore. But but first, I want to say a big thanks to everybody who's used our link when they've gone to Tiller Money to check it out. Tiller is what I use to manage my money uh, because of the fact that it's a spreadsheet. I'm not really a spreadsheet geek. I'm definitely a money geek, but not a spreadsheet geek. What I like about it might be different than what you like about it. I like the fact that I can dumb it down, and because it's a spreadsheet, I can get rid of all of the... The, the charts and graphs that I don't use and make it very simple so I can look at my money simply. However, if you like a line by line budget, you want more, you can add stuff in. So Tiller Money automates your Google Sheet or Microsoft Excel. So you have a, a clear view of your finances with everything in one place. For a free 30 day trial and to check it out and see how it works, head to tillerhq.com forward slash MWF. Tillerhq.com forward slash MWF for money with friends. Jason, what's our takeaway from this piece about uh, watches and and uh, maybe not microphones, but uh, watches and thank you notes and all that. Um, I would, you know, I would classify the takeaway of this podcast as I would just say, give it away. So it's about the power of, of generosity, but not blind generosity. It's sort of uh, focused and targeted generosity. In this case, in the stories case because it created a brand and it created uh, a, a very successful store because uh, the idea was to give these these expensive watches to every president starting with with Reagan well, or with Truman actually so uh, to me it's it's I would classify it as the power of generosity 
Yeah, I think I, I, I totally agree with that because mine was actually the power of relationships, not just not just building relationships so that the people around you are empowered, but also, Jason, I think that we think too about um, – about how much we don't think enough about how much more fun it is to have people around us that feel empowered and enjoy uh, the journey as much as we do. That's right. I love that takeaway. I uh, relate. I mean, relationships. Yeah, relationships are kind of uh, all, all we have, right? And and this is a podcast about financials, but good relationships will create financial success. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Hey, I heard a rumor that you might have a book out that kind of uh, talks about this, about maybe b being able to persuade people a little bit. I do. I do have a book. I'm glad you brought it up, Joe. It is called The Soulful Art of Persuasion. And uh, you can get it on, on Amazon. You can find it at thesoulfulart.com, uh, which is my website. But it, it really is about um, how to how to be a more soulful persuader for sustained business success. What I love about it, by the way, isn't just um, uh, some huge takeaways and ahas in the book, but it also, and I think you'd expect this from Jason, it's it's a damn good looking book. Like it is well put together. Like you guys spend a lot of time putting the graphics together and the package so that it, it even looks, well, we can see it right behind you on the shelf there. It just, it's it, it looks, it yeah, looks, it yeah, it looks great on your shelf. A hey, little, little known fact, Joe, uh, my company actually, uh, some volunteers from my company, we actually did the, uh, whatever your politics are, we did the Biden logo. That's, that is, that is pretty distinctive. It's funny. There was actually a 99% visible and we're going to have Roman Mars on stacking Benjamins talking about the people that make different logos and about how logos make that's a, that's a whole nother episode, my friend. Cause I know that what goes into that logo and I'm sure there was a lot of thought put into the E going across, um, like how, how yeah, that's, uh, there yeah, it looks unplanned, but there's actually science and research behind it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Uh, Jason comes back with us tomorrow. We're talking about a piece about the Etsy CEO talking about now. Now of all times is a good time to do marketing, and he's got uh, some great points here. So Jason and I back tomorrow here at Money with Friends. Bye-bye. This show's created and hosted by us, Joe Salcihai and Bobby Rebell, and it's edited and produced by Ashley Wall. Money with Friends is a product of Money with Friends LLC, copyright 2020. For a list of the thought leaders who appear on the podcast and links to the stories discussed, head to our website, moneywithfriendspodcast.com. You can also check out our schedule for upcoming recording sessions so you can join us and be part of the show. Also, be sure to follow us on social media at Money Friends Pod on both Instagram and Twitter. Look out for our polls and quizzes. You could get a shout out on the show. We're well worth following. We promise. As with anything, remember, you shouldn't take advice from any of us or any other videos or podcasts without first talking to your financial advisor. These people on this episode, they're here for your and their entertainment purposes only. I'm Bobby. I'm Joe. We'll see you here back next time with another episode of Money with Friends.